Do the Barracuda have a culture problem? Going to look at the Martin Kaut interview and why he left San Jose, uh, where all the vets have gone for the Barracuda, and if there actually is a culture issue, or if maybe we're just making a little bit too much out of this. So all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now and Inside the Rink, and I want to thank you for making Locked On Sharks your first listen, probably a part of the Locked On Network, where we cover your team every day, or at least during the offseason right now, three days a week. So um, you can easily find us wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch this on YouTube as well if you want to become an everydayer. If you haven't already, go check out my Dan Rusinowski interview with the, the Hall of Famer himself, or soon-to-be Hall of Famer himself. But um, today we have much more serious matter to discuss, and that is what is going on with the Barracuda. Um, Monday, Martin Kaut had a, a interview that he really that he did with a uh, uh, some I believe it was a newspaper or, or who you know a, a news publication um, in his hometown or his home country of Czechia, um, basically kind of saying why he left San Jose and uh, credit to both Shang Peng and Max Miller for the the work they did on this uh, you know of getting it translated um, trying to kind of, you know, reach out to the sharks and, and see what they have to say. Um, you know, and I want to kind of give it a couple days to breathe and see if there's any more information that kind of came out before I just, you know, kind of jumped on it and, um, you know, and talk to some people who are no longer with the organization, um, but have been affiliated with the organization at some point and just kind of want to get a sense of what's, kind of happening behind the scenes with the Barracuda. So we're going to start with the count interview and we're going to look at kind of some of the veterans and, you know, what has happened to all of them because there has been an exodus of, of veteran leadership from the Barracuda the, this off season. Um, but I think with the count interview, the, the big takeaway is one, um, the, the fighting thing, right? Uh, if you didn't see it or whatever, um, Martin Cow said, that the coaching staff or whomever front office or whoever it was would pick out a player that they want to go have him fight. Um, and usually the player was much bigger. Not that Martin Kaut's a pretty big guy, right? He's six foot two, 190 pounds. Um, but they would pick out like the biggest dude on the other team and Martin Kaut, um, not known for fighting. He's had two career fights in his uh, in his career. Both of them came in 2019, one of them in an NHL preseason game, uh, and then one of them in the AHL, and that's it. Um, Mark Count, a f- former first-round pick that is, you know, hasn't panned out um, any, you know, the way that the Avalanche or the Sharks had hoped. Um, but still, the, you, you drafted Martin Count to be – a goal scorer, a playmaker, you know, to provide offense for you. And um, getting a dude who's had three career cushions and a shoulder injury to get into fights doesn't seem like a great idea. Um, The Sharks, of course, have uh, released a statement. Um, So they're a quote. We have been made aware of comments attributed to Martin Kautz stating that he was pressured to deliberately instigate a physical engagement with opposing players on ice. Let us be unequivocally clear that there's no direction was ever given or insinuated by the members of the Sharks or Barracuda coaching or hockey staffs. Of course, that's what the Sharks are going to say, right? We're not going to pressure. We don't, we're not going to pressure a guy to do something he doesn't want to do, but it's just, it's a bad look for, for everybody. And there's pirate people I see on the internet. Oh, Martin Kelt soft, you know, he needs to be more, you don't need to like the basic with Martin Kelt doing this interview. He's basically burned every bridge, any opportunity of him to come back and play in North America. The Sharks are going to own his rights, right? But 
like he knows what he did when he said this. Like he knows he's never coming back to the north to North America to play hockey because of, of what he said, and you know uh, of of this, right? We know coaching staffs and teams. It's an old boys club, right? It's a close knit circle, and when you step out and say something that doesn't quite quite click, I Martin Cout, um. Yeah, he's not coming back to North America to play for the Sharks or play for any team. I would be shocked, to be honest. Um, so he's going to go play in Europe, and good for him, you know, if to go play over there and go play in front of his hometown and, or his home country and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, some of the other things that really stuck out to me from this interview was the guys were, weren't playing as a team. They were playing for themselves. And I know there is, you know, a good – like having a healthy competition, but – you know, and there's always that with any pro sports, right? There's competition for against the other opponent, but there's also internal competition, right? Who gets the best minutes, who gets the power play opportunities, who gets this, like there is a competition and that, that is part of sports, right? And there's always going to be the best player on the team. And there's always a competition for that. And, um, but that shouldn't derail your team this competition or this playing for yourself shouldn't derail the team uh what's the same right there's no i in team or right um and plenty of other franchises and plenty of other organizations you can have healthy competition um but still play together as a team and you know i think you can point to this being something as we'll talk to here in a minute with, with all the veterans gone, right? Um, there has been an, a mass exodus of, of veteran players who had really great seasons for the Barracuda who are no longer with the Barracuda. And we'll go through the list here in a little bit, but um, there's just, there's something that doesn't smell right here uh, with what's going on uh, with, with this, with the Barracuda and whether it's the front office from, from what I'm, People I've talked to, again, um, limit, you know, from what I'm hearing, this is more of a front office issue than it is more of a coaching staff issue. Um, but there's there's something with the culture here of, you know, th this this development is so important for the, the Sharks, right? Is making sure that these young players are being put on the right path. And having the right people surrounding you, whether it's the front office, whether it's the coaching, whether it's the veterans on the team, that is so important to making sure that everything goes right. It's hard enough to win no matter what league you're in. If you're in the NHL, if you're in the AHL, wherever league you're in, it's hard enough to win night in and night out. Having a bad culture is is a death nail of, of just guys don't want to maybe give 110%. You know, coming to the rink every day, it becomes a slog. Um, you th start thinking about yourself. You start thinking about your next opportunity. Whatever it is, like, that, that's is, is bad for everybody. And, you know, I think Martin Cout, this, him coming out and telling it like it was, and again, he was only here for a limited time, half the season. But if he's like, dude, I was here for four months and I'm done, that that's not a good look. And Martin Cout was going to probably going to be one of those tweener guys who plays in the NHL and the AHL next year and had an opportunity. I think he had a legitimate chance to win a, a job in the NHL next year, especially, um, you know, with, with Stephen Lawrence getting traded like there. I think there's a, a legitimate possibility for Martin Cout to kind of be a guy. If not, he was probably going to be a top line forward on the Barracuda um, being kind of looked at one of the older guys and probably play, still play a, a ton of NHL games next year. So um, it's just, it's really interesting um, that he was just like, I'd, I'm done. I, I was there for, you know, for four months and that was, I'm good. I'm good, man. Um, yeah. So before we look at kind of all the vets that have left, do want to take a quick break uh talk to you guys about our friends over at FanDuel and um if you want to take that first swing on betting MLB on FanDuel right now you get 10 times your first bet uh amount and bonus bets up to $200 that's right bet 20 bucks you'll land $200 in bonus bets win or lose that's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line to over under who thinks going to hit the first home run uh, again, Otani hitting home runs. Like just keep betting on that because you're probably going to win a lot. Um, 
because Otani is awesome and he hits a bunch of home runs. So, um, and you get to root for cool guys doing cool stuff. So, do this all on an app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports books. So, sign up today. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get up to 200 bucks in bonus bets. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so all the vets that have left, right? Um, Andrew Agazzino, the captain, literally the captain of the team last year, um, traded, asked to be traded this offseason, was traded to the to the Ducks organization. Uh, we're just going to go through the list, and we'll kind of go back and look at kind of each case by case, right? Jeffrey VL, shark, longtime shark, uh, prospect, quote, I guess, pro, I don't know, gone, right? Signed a, a contract with the Winnipeg Jets. Um, CJC's brought in last offseason, gone. Kyle Criscolo, traded for, Jasper Weatherby traded for, um, gone. Derek Pouliot, signed last offseason as AHL deal, earned an NHL contract at the end of the season. Um, I'm out. Aaron Dell, granted, I get it's a very crowded uh, goalie room. Aaron Dell, you know, is definitely um, we we know exactly what Aaron Dell is, and the Sharks want to get younger in that position. Um, but still, just just naming names here um, right now, right? Um, you know, just just these, you know, Luke Johnson. Brought in last year, right? Um, we, you go through like all these names that were part of, you know, to be here to help these young guys get acclimated. And, you know, they did that. These young guys all played the season. These You're expecting them to kind of take a, a big step from year one to year two for a lot of these guys. Your Tristan Robbins, your Gushins, your Ozzies, your Brandon Co. All these guys to kind of take a step, right? And you don't, maybe you, you don't want to have veterans um, kind of in the way, I guess. But... All these dudes, and yes, I know the Sharks did add some people. Um, you know, Ryan Carpenter, who's probably going to be the Andrew Agazzino role. Um, if you need him to come up and play some games in the NHL, he can come up and play some games in the NHL as a fourth line guy, but it's probably going to be, um, you know, kind of looked at as, as one of the leaders for for the team, right? Um, you know, they, they traded for, uh, uh, you know, Leon Kavanke, who's not an older guy, but is probably going to be one of the, you know, potential either on the Sharks. He's going to be kind of leading the defensive unit uh, with the Muka Madulin. Um, You know, they, they signed Scott Sarabrini, who's, you know, a 30 year old uh, uh, forward. It's kind of, you know, definitely adds some grit and some toughness. Um, yes. They've added some, some players like that. Right. Um, but again, it's not like, you know, we'll start with like Agazino. I guess, you know, literally the captain, right? He's been the captain or he's been an alternate captain on basically almost every team he's been on. Um, you know, he was going back to the OHL. He was a, a <laughs> he was the captain for three years for the Niagara Ice Dogs, um, which is just absolutely insane for three years of it. Um, the Lake Erie Monsters in 2014, 2015, alternate captain. Uh, San Antonio Rampage, alternate captain uh, for a couple years. The Colorado Eagles, alternate captain. San Diego Goals, alternate captain. Uh, the the Wolves, uh, Barry, Scranton Penguins, alternate captain. Um, and then was a captain for the Barracuda. Like he is, he is a leadership dude, right? Um, asked to be traded. Why does, and I get maybe his family lives in San, in the, you know, down south maybe he likes it there a little bit more but it's it's not like players don't work in one spot and live in another spot like you know um and again i get it like maybe he's got family down there whatever whatever is the, the case but he had an amazing season for the barracuda right he he was their mvp of the season he set franchise records he has 61 points in 63 games for the barracuda um that is that is his Second best season um, since the 2014-2015 where he had 64 points in 74 games. So you're right, this season was one of his best seasons ever. Um, asked to be traded. Right? A little bit of a head scratcher. 
you know. Um, Jeffrey Veal, I get it. He was never going to get his opportunity here. He signed an NHL contract with the Winnipeg Jets. He's going to get an opportunity, I think, to play with the Winnipeg Jets this year. I get it. He he was easily he was surpassed by some of the younger talent. Probably wasn't ever going to get a fair shake when it came to NHL opportunities. Um, I understand that moving on, right? Totally get that. Derek Pouliot, again, AHL deal. They, you know, I know he missed a good chunk of the season, but when he was on there, he was the Barracuda's best defenseman, and he won the award for the Barracuda's best defenseman. Was an alternate captain, wore an A for the team, um, earned earned an NHL contract gone and maybe we want to live home i know his family is from the the pittsburgh area um but he signed with the stars it's not like it's that's still a long way away right um so sign with the stars probably i know you know it's probably going to be playing with the the texas stars with their ahl at least i would expect him to you know to, to spend a majority of the season there right um Luke John, you know, CJ Cease, you brought in be a leader for everything here. CJ Cease, super great dude, right? Great locker room guy. Um, went back to Manitoba. Um, it, it's interesting that a lot of these guys after one season was just like, I'm good. And I know it's the AHL and guys move around all the time. Um, you know, and even the Barracuda roster, right? Look at the Barracuda roster from 2021, 22 to the Barracuda roster now it is completely different, right? And that's what happens in the AHL, especially when you have a new, well, one that just happens because that's just how the AHL is. A lot of guys, you know, a lot of short term deals, guys moving up, guys coming down, the rosters are, are turned over. And you also had Mike Greer coming in, wanting to try to kind of fill out the roster with some of his guys. I totally get that. But I guess, you know, signed a two year deal. You made him the captain and he asked for a trade out like that. That's a red fl- and Andrew Agazino from if you talk to anybody about Agazino. They say he's one of the, the best dudes like on the ice, off the ice. He is one of the best dudes in hockey. Um, one year. Get me out of here. Again, if it was just one, you know, and all these other guys were like, yes, we love what's going on here. We love what's, you know, the direction of the franchise. We love what's happening. We want to be here for these young guys. And a lot of these guys know, right? Your Pouliots, your Agazinos, your, you know, your, your Ceases. Yes, they want to win and contribute and, and play NHL game. And, you know, your Chris Colos, right? They want to win and play NHL games, but they know what their role is right now. Their role is to help these young guys get ready and they all know this, right? They all know this. That is uh, why a lot of these guys stick around in the AHL for so long is because they're good at their jobs. They're good at one playing hockey, but they're also good at kind of helping these young guys along, especially, you know, a guy like Agazino, right? Who's been on one, two, three, four, five, six. He's been on seven or eight AHL teams. Like he is, that's, that's like a quarter of the league at that point. Like, He's been on, he's seen it all. Like it's, it just, it seems really weird that they were all, all of them just like, I'm good. So um, before we continue and kind of continue to discuss if there actually is an issue or if maybe we're just kind of overblowing this or some of the stuff I've heard um, do want to, Thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Uh, again, proudly a part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day, um, or at least three days a week right now. Again, if you want to be an everydayer, all you got to do is just follow along wherever you get your episodes, uh, your podcast episodes, or you can watch on YouTube. We'll be back next week. Uh, again, got another great guest I'm getting lined up. Um, and we'll maybe we'll start kind of digging into what the roster is going to look like kind of start getting geared up for the next season. Um, so just what I got to do is make sure you guys follow along wherever you get your podcast or watch on YouTube uh, for your next episode of locked on sharks. So is this all overblown? Am I just, is this July as in, you know, we're, we're kind of overblowing things. We're just waiting for hockey to start. It just seems like there is a, uh, a lot of smoke coming from, you know, 
again, if it was just Martin Kaut said it and everyone else was like, oh, you know, that's that's weird or whatever. Um, or if it was just like Andrew Agazino, like, hey, I requested a trade. I wanted to go be closer to my family. And then like your other guys resigned or wanted to stay or was, you know, made an effort. Um, OK, cool. I can see that. It's just it seems like it's a lot of other stuff that is a little too coincidental or that's happening you know and even talking to some people who are no longer a part of the organization it seemed like they didn't really kind of go all out to take care of some of their guys right um they didn't have meals for the guys again this is a professional it's not like some beer league it's not you and your friends getting together to play hockey um you know once a week this is a professional organization um they didn't have provide meals for the guys until March. Again, this is a professional organization. Didn't have meals for the guys until March. Um, cool. If you were a young player on your way to rink, grab yourself, you know, something in the drive through or whatever. But like, I don't know, man, like, isn't part of developing players, you know, teaching them about like how to take care of their body good nutrition, stuff like that. Like, wouldn't you want to like give them, like if you provide breakfast and they're still kind of going out and pick, like fine, you know, at least you're providing them with an option. Right. Um, but like just simple thing, like take care of your dudes, like feed the guys, you know, they're, and I get, again, I know it's expensive to feed dudes, but like you're a professional hockey team, uh, like stuff like that, you know, um, taking care of some of the, of the wags, right? The wives and girlfriends, like, you know, giving them a space to sit or together or like a, a suite. I've been to Texas Arena. I'm, I'm, that place, I mean, when it's, you guys do a great job of trying to fill it, but it's not like this place is filled all the time. Like there's suites and stuff. Like you can't have one suite for like the wives and girlfriends and stuff like that. Um you know, just like little things like that, that, that sets you apart and makes you a good organization is taking care of the people because um, it worries me if this stuff continues to happen, you're going to have problems signing veterans, right? It's not like the hockey players, they don't talk to each other. The the wives and girlfriends, they don't talk to each other. Like, hey, what, you know, we're thinking about signing in San Jose. What'd you think? Oh, I had a terrible experience there. You know, um, I was, one of, somebody told me, it's it, it's not organized like the it's everything's just chaotic there um and that that's bad to hear like that that's embarrassing as a, a sharks fan to hear that that it's disorganized like you you want to be proud of your hockey team and stuff but like when you hear that stuff that that coming out that it was you know disorganized that's that's not good okay what and again it could just be some isolated incidents um but you want your your organization to take care of, of its players because if word gets out which i'm sure it already has that you know the sharks and the barracuda they don't take care of their players what guys are going to want to come sign here right and then the young guys they don't know any better right they're just trying to figure out how to like do things um you know how do i become a professional they don't know any better um you know you're 19 20 21 year old kid right you don't care you're, you're like cool i'm just showing up to work gonna skate gonna go home sleep whatever but like when you get older and the veterans like it is it's their job they know they know their job right um taking care of your guys that's just those little things that makes life easier for them right Hey, I don't have to worry about, you know, if you're one, say if you're one of the, the players who's a dad and you got kids and stuff, like you're trying to take a pregame nap, um, you're trying to, you know, get ready for the game, you know, that's one less thing having to worry about. Oh, I got to make something, I got to do all that stuff, like little things like that. Like I have to cook before I go. Um, no, take care of the team, like take care of your guys, put them in the best position to succeed. And yeah, that, that type of stuff is frustrating. And I think there is an issue, right? You know, you even going back to like Ryan Merkley, and I know Ryan Merkley, all the red flags in the world, but like, how was he treated this entire time, right? Was, wasn't given a clear path, wasn't, you know, was kind of yo-yoed between the Sharks and the Barracuda. Um, 
And I think he became really kind of bitter and angry. And I, I, you know, at certain people in the front office that led to his, you know, led to the blow up that led to his trade. Um, I know granted Ryan Merkley is still sitting out there as a free agent right now. Um, and that, that pick is totally with, but still it's not like, you know, it, this, this isn't all 100% Ryan Merkley's fault. Um, it's, it's, it's a combination of things that didn't go right. And, it's just you're seeing a lot of these things started kind of put together and with with some evidence and you know i, I think it's just oh i got attacked by a fly um I, I, it's too many of these things coming together to be coincidental so um we'll keep an eye on it keep our, you know keep our ears to the ground see if we hear other stuff but it's just it is a bad look for san jose who is right now in the trying to rebuild, trying to build a winning culture, um, trying to, you know, kind of figure out what they're doing with, you know, to try to get back to becoming a, a winning team and a winning franchise. And um, this stuff needs to be figured out, right? Um, you need to take care of, take care of the veterans, put them in the best position to be able to help your young players develop. Um, so, that's going to be it for me today. That's going to be it for me this week. Again, we're down to three episodes a week. Um, so um, be back next week. Like I said, try, got a, got a good good interview uh, getting lined up for you guys. So um, make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and threads at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter and threads at uh, my fry hole. And, and until Monday, bye friends.